welcome to my channel. My name is uh, Misty and this channel's name of course is Speculative Magpie and we are here to do, sorry, getting comfortable in my chair. We are here to do a book review, well a series review today, okay? Um, this is the Motherless Child series that I read. I read these three books. The first two, The Motherless Child and Good Girls, I read in December. And Nothing to Devour was the first book I finished in January. And so, yes, this is the last of the, um, the, the, the December books that I read. So, after this, I should be caught up, I hope. Wow, um, my husband bought me a ring light for Christmas, and I'm not quite sure if I'm used to it yet. Um, it's definitely different, but it's like kind of bright, which I think is supposed to be the point. But you know, hey, we're gonna go with it. So, yes, this is The Motherless Child by Glenn Hirschberg. Now, this is a series that I found on eBay. I actually found Nothing to Devour, just randomly browsing books on eBay. And when I realized that it was the last book in a trilogy and I wanted to read that one, I knew I had to get the other books. Um, so, I'm going to read you the synopsis of the first book, and then we're going to talk about the series as a whole. I can only talk about the first book, that way I won't give you any spoilers and ruin the series for you if you do decide to read it, okay? So here we are, The Motherless Child, which is the first book, and the synopsis is, in the American South, the heart of rock and roll beats hard and strong in honky tonks and roadside bars. And trailer trash doesn't begin to reflect the strength of the women who live in those thin walled mobile homes. Sophie and Natalie are young mothers barely out of their teens, each raising a toddler. Their daily lives are full of dull routine, so they are thrilled to discover a mysterious musician, the Whistler performing at a dive bar near Charlotte. What happens next is beyond their wildest dreams, at least they think it is, because when they wake up in the morning, their memories are hazy, their clothes are shredded, and they are covered in dried blood. They are also no longer human. Sophie and Natalie flee from their children, from Natalie's mom, who vows to protect the babies but can't stop worrying about her daughter, from the whistler and his eerie mother. But the women's wild ride through the heart of the South can't stop them from changing, can't hide them from their destinies. The whistler is on their trail, as bound to them as they are to him, driven by a passion so intense it threatens to unhinge him. The final confrontation is unavoidable and unpredictable. Mother, the motherless child is a moving and eloquent tale of depth and breadth of motherly love and how that love can heal and hurt, save and destroy, sometimes at the same time. So this is basically a vampire tale about women. And Natalie and Sophie are mothers. Um, they're single mothers. Their mothers were single mothers. Technically, uh, the Whistler's companion, who he refers to as mother, which has some Oedipus Rex leanings there, um, refers to his companion as mother. Um, this whole whole series is about women, the relationships that they have to do, the strength of, of what being a mother can mean, um, friendships between women, how deep and varied they can be. It's, 
it's a lot. There's everything in these books are so well tied together. Um, this series as a whole is a five out of five star read. Um, I loved this series. Normally, it's like I love the first book and then the other books are just like meh. Um, this last book, Nothing to Devour, was a completely satisfying ending to this series. There, was n there were no loopholes. There were no loose ends. When, when the series was done... I wasn't like, man, I wish I would have found out a little bit more about that person, or I wish I would have known what happened here. This was such a tight, well-written story um, that it was just, I am so glad I took a chance on it and ordered these three books because they were just amazing. Um, Sophie and Natalie in the first book, um, like it says, they go to a um, dive bar to see the Whistler. Natalie likes underground, indie, unusual bands, and the Whistler kind of has this weird following. Um, he sings like old blues, rock, kind of country-esque songs, um, and they both go to see him, and the Whistler fixates on Natalie. Um, he describes her as his destiny. And in here, he basically turns them both. He turns Natalie because he wants Natalie with him. And he turns Sophie because he wants Natalie to basically have a companion too. Kind of like he has mother. And um, you're never, you're, you don't never know mother's name. I don't think mother even remembers her name. And both Sophie and Natalie wake up and they realize what's been done to them. And they basically go home, pack up all their stuff, look at Jess, which is Natalie's mother, and go, look, you got to run. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen when we change, but it's highly possible that we could come back and hurt you and hurt our kids. So you need to run. And Jess runs. Jess is what would she being Natalie's mother, she was she would be what you would call a strong female character. She's the one that shoulders everybody's burdens. Um basically, you know, she had Jess when she was young and and the dad just sort of left. And so she never had any interest in men again. She just stayed and looked after Jess. And then Natalie's mother is an ex-heroin addict, also a single mother. So there's like parallels between all these characters. And Jess and Natalie, Jess and Natalie, um, Natalie and Sophie run because while they know, kind of know what's happening, they really don't know what it's going to do to them. And they discover that they have this magnetic power that makes people do what they want them to do. But they don't necessarily want to turn into vampires. They haven't killed anybody yet. And so Motherless Child is basically Sophie and Natalie have to try to figure out their new existence, how that works while still missing their children because they're close enough to their humanity that they still remember what those feelings are like. When you have the juxt juxtaposition of Whistler and Mother who are not human anymore. They have no, no warmth or no feeling or no understanding about what it means to be human, a parent, a mother, have ties anymore because they're just wandering, singing, killing people, doing all kinds of things. And it was just so good. And there was so many times in here where you were just shocked. I mean, Glenn pulls no punches. The vampires in here are not nice. They're not friendly. They're not sad that they're vampires. 
the only ones that are sad that they're now vampires are Sophie and Natalie because they miss their children. So you're having Whistler hunting down Natalie because he's waiting for her to kill somebody so she'll become like him, like a vampire. And then you have Mother that's jealous of this new relationship between the Whistler and Natalie. And then Sophie's out here trying to figure out what's going on because she doesn't have, she just has Natalie. But Natalie has the Whistler and Jess and Sophie's just like, all right, well, I guess I'm a vampire now, so I don't know what to do. And Natalie is trying to keep Sophie from going completely off the rails. And it's just so good. And the ending just left me flabbergasted. Seriously, I couldn't believe what happened in this book. It's intense, at times brutal, several times like really disgusting with the way that they described some of the scenes in here um because natalie and sophie aren't human anymore and their bodies can do some really weird stuff and then you have all right i'm really not going to give too many spoilers about the next books but i mean i kind of have to talk to them good girls is book two takes place almost immediately after um motherless child and Whistler, you can see Whistler in here. Um, he's moved on trying to track down the people from this book, Motherless Child. Um, and along the way, he meets another woman named Rebecca. Now, Rebecca's not Natalie. She's not his destiny. But she's interesting enough that unfortunately she catches his attention. And in this book, um, you also meet Aunt Sally, which was part of um, the Whistler and Mother's like core group. Aunt Sally's like the leader of everybody. She's down in the Delta. She's She made Mother and Mother made Whistler. So she's like in there. You meet her and you meet her group of little monsters, which is basically what Whistler and Mother were. They were her creations. And she refers to them as monsters. Now, Rebecca, she's an orphan. She grew up in foster care. Um, the last house she went to, she has a weird, strained relationship with her foster mother. Um, she's really fond of her foster dad. She works at a suicide hotline. And that's pretty much where the Whistler makes first contact with her. And this is the book of everything that goes on while Whistler is tracking down the people from the first book, how he intervenes in these people's lives. And it's intense and it's brutal and heartbreaking. And um, on brand, this is the book that has my favorite character in it, which is a side character who's one of Aunt Sally's little monsters. He's a vampire. His name's Caribou. And he's just as sick and twisted as everybody else. But for some reason, i he's my favorite. And then you have Nothing to Devour, which is uh, the last book in series. And this book is an intense ride from page one to, to the end. Like I said, this is the first time that I've actually read a series where I felt completely satisfied, where I didn't want anything else, I didn't want anything anymore. This was just it. This was, I think, probably the best ending to this story that that Glenn Hirschner, Hirschberg could possibly have written. And Caribou is in here. Um, just so much goes on in here. Uh, Rebecca, characters from the first novel. Um, Jess plays a big part in here. This book takes place five years after this book, where all the characters are having to deal with um, what went on, what happened to them. Um, you know, Jess is trying to take care of everybody, and they have gone about as far as they could go. And they're on this little island where they can basically keep an eye on who comes in and who comes off. But you can't hide for too long because 
once I guess you're been on their radar, you're always going to be on their radar. And Aunt Sally plays a bigger role in this book. And it's so good. So good. I highly recommend this book. This is other than, the, um, you know, Hotel Transylvania by Chelsea Quinn Yarborough. This is probably uh, my favorite vampire series I've ever read. Um, I'm so glad I got the library copies because they're hardback, hardbound, and in plastic casing. So these books are going out on my shelf. I completely love this book, these books. And yeah, I tried to do a good review with no spoilers just in case you want to read them. So, I, which I really hope that if vampires interest you, if strong female relationships interest you, if brutal and disgusting <laughs> conflicts and confrontations interest you i hope you pick up this book these these books um like i said five out of five stars is phenomenal um so yeah that's my review thank you for coming back so we can talk about some books and things and i will talk to you guys later bye bye